is the Big 12, what's the right way to say this? Like, does does everyone hate the Big 12? I think there is something in that. I think when you look at the Big 12, I think there is some consternation. I feel like a lot of people settled for the Big 12. Um, Utah fan, I'm talking to you, which I think has created acrimony. I think it has created frustration. I think inside the walls of the Big 12, there is no doubt that Utah football fans are not well-liked. Um, their aggressive behavior in nature on that former Twitter platform that I very rarely patronize is something of infamy, if you will. But I don't, I don't buy into this idea that the Big 12 is the least popular Power Four conference. I think when you look at where football fans and their hearts and minds live, I think you hate what you can never be, and that would be the SEC. Do people love the Big 12? They don't. But here's the problem for the Big 12. People don't hate the Big 12. People don't love the Big 12. I think people are very indifferent about the Big 12. And it goes back to what we always talk about on the show, the lack of a true blue blood brand. I know we get our ass kicked for that on a routine basis by our friends in Stillwater. But facts are facts. While Mike Gundy is railing about um, how much he hates NIL and its agents, Everybody else is trying to build a national championship program. And I think the bottom line with the Big 12 is there's a lot of indifference about the Big 12, which is worse than being hated. You would lo- you want to be loved. You want to be hated. You just don't want to be indifferent. And I think that's the biggest problem facing the brand of the Big 12 is there is, there is nothing that scares you about Big 12 football. There is nothing that fascinates you or there's no freak factor about Big 12 football. There's just nothing. They're going to play a lot of games and not a lot of people are going to watch, in my opinion. I think that's the true reality. Fan bases and idiot columnists and all of that aside, the truth about the Big 12 is most common garden variety college football fans are indifferent about the Big 12 and I think that's a big problem, Jake. Yeah, well, and I think the 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 issue is, is that the Big 12 as a conference just hasn't won enough in the college football playoff era. I mean, you haven't been, you know, consistently, you know, getting to a national championship game as a conference. You haven't consistently even really been having a major presence in the college football playoff. I mean, obviously, you know, you've had some teams go, but it, but it's not the same as it is with the Big Ten and the SEC. And I think... You know, the, the obviously the other conference is the ACC. And and when people say, oh, well, you know, people hate the Big 12 or, or why, why does nobody want to talk about the Big 12? Well, I, I think it's because there's so much to talk about off the field with the ACC. And then obviously the Big 10 and the SEC are the two juggernauts. So the Big 12 finds its finds itself in this place where it has to figure out a way to win more ball games and have more eight, nine, 10 win teams versus five, six, seven win teams. And that's where, you know, you start looking at the conference and you begin to understand that, that, you know, like uh, with BYU, as we referenced earlier in the show, like it's huge that they win seven games this year, you know, West Virginia, it's huge that you put, put out another, you know, eight win season. Like this conference has to continue to grow and, and, and kind of climb the ladder in totality so that more people will start talking about the big 12 and including the big 12 in those conversations around who's going to win a national championship. Because again, when, when you talk about football, that's all anyone wants to talk about. Like it's great that football's back and that, you know, we finally get to see what guys like Joey McGuire are going to do and what TCU is going to be like, and can K state live up to it. But the reality of the situation is nobody's talking about any of those brands when we're talking about national championships in the college football playoff. And that's the Big 12's single biggest problem. And everyone wants to point to, oh, well, you lost Texas and Oklahoma. I don't think Texas is winning the SEC. I I, I think Texas will get in the college football playoff, but it'll just be another year for Texas. I, I, I don't think with the injuries you've had that it's going to be some amazing year. So I think once again, in this cycle, we're going to have Georgia, Bama, Ohio State, Oregon, the usual suspects. And again, that would not include Utah. That would not include Oklahoma State because I just don't think that those teams have the firepower to compete with Georgia and Bama and Ohio State. Like, I like Utah. And, and, and Kyle Whittingham's awesome as a guy. I respect him. But 
I, I think for the Big 12's purposes, you just don't have the firepower to keep up right now. And that's your biggest problem. Yeah, I, 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 I tend to think people don't understand that it just doesn't matter. Get on the field and play the game. Utah can beat any team in the country. That's the, whether people want to embrace that or not, Utah can, can beat any team in the country. Georgia, Ohio State, it doesn't matter. Uh, I think what, what the real issue is, is that people don't pay attention. I think, uh, you know, I, I, I point this out on a regular basis that you have people voting in the AP poll who don't watch college football. But what games do they watch? What does soccer guy in Minnesota but, watch? But that's my point. That's why Georgia or Alabama or it it's that's why the SEC routinely gets the bias that they get. Does that mean that the SEC always wins? Clearly not. Clearly not. And I think if you're the Big 12 into a, a, probably a greater extent right now, the ACC in football, you're an afterthought. I I I think one of the fascinating storylines to watch as we kick off this, you know, week zero this week, does the Big 12 or the ACC get multiple teams in the college football playoff? I think that is a really good question. I, I don't know how the ACC would. I mean, I I, I just, I, I, you look at that conference and it's not hard to understand that you've essentially got one team. And, well, and, and we talked about year. that. We talked about that the other day. The schedule does not favor the ACC getting multiple teams. Yeah, and, and then you look at the Big 12, and the, and the Big 12 is more of a problem of the conference eating itself. I mean, if if the scheduling was perfect on any given year, yeah, I think you could get like, you know, you could probably get three teams in, but you're assuming that, you know, K-State or Kansas is is going to have that big season at the same time. And, and, and again, obviously, Oklahoma State and Utah, we're just assuming are going to be you know, like Utah, we're just uh, we're just assuming you're going to be a ten win team. You're I, I don't see it with Oklahoma State. I I truly do not. I think that you can't have this much turmoil in a in an off season with a star player. You can't have this little, in my opinion, quality depth offensively, and I think they're they're. They're solid. They're not elite defensively. They're, I hope I'm wrong because for the Big 12 to truly achieve and meet its potential, I will just continue to say Oklahoma State has to be elite. Is Oklahoma State better than seven other teams who are not conference champions to get in? Because that's what it's going to take. They're to not. To get in. And I, don't, I agree. I don't think they are. I think the, the wild cards in the Big 12 – are K State because I think K State has to show us that you can start a, a I think a, a wildly overrated unknown quarterback. We have no and I hesitate to even go here <laughs> because I think we've talked about Kansas a lot, and I am a I am a big believer. In Jalen Daniels, I am somebody who believes that that cat is, if he ever stays healthy, he's going to be a top five pick in the NFL draft. Right. I think he's that good. And I think what Lance has built, I think the facility investments they've made, you took Kansas from a zero. You understand this. You took Kansas from Mark Mangino wiping his ass with a bathroom towel. Um, to now one of the, in my opinion, absolute best teams in college football, not the big 12. And I think they're, they are at their very best, a top 10 team in the country. Now they got to win games. Do you think that them playing their, their home conference games at Arrowhead has any impact? irrelevant? Doesn't matter. I think the quarterback's got to be healthy. But I, I don't want to get too far away from Kansas for Kansas State. You have a cat in in. You have a quarterback who is unproven. You have a quarterback, and listen, Avery Johnson is. And I don't mean the foot the the basketball coach. I mean the starting quarterback. Right. Oh, but his best friends at running, but that's great. 
He's got to show that he can stand in the pocket and deliver the football and complete 60 to 65% of his passes. Who here believes he can do that right out of the gate? Well, and who here believes that they've got the wide receiver room to to give him the windows to attempt those passes? I mean, that's that's the other side of it. Because I feel like when you look at a young quarterback, like everyone wants to say, hey, like, yeah, this guy's got to have a season for them to contend, obviously. But part of him having a season is dudes being open. And, and that's where I look at it. And I say, hey, you look at K-State's schedule, and you're playing some really good defenses. Like, you're, you're not playing pushover secondaries. Like, you're going to have guys who can really cover wide receivers. So so that's why I say it, it, it for K-State, yeah, Avery Johnson's a big question mark, but but I do think it comes down to the wide receiver room improper play calling with down and distance. Because, again, if we see... You know, if we see bad play calling in in good situations, you know, you're third and four and you need five yards and you don't make a good play call. Or the example you always use, right, where you're third and six or whatever, you're third and intermediate and your wide receiver cuts the route off, you know, two yards too short. I mean, that's, that's going to play into your success. Those little things that for a team like K-State have to go right. You have to have those little things to 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 win a lot of ball games. It's not going to be just assumed that those things are going to happen the way it would be for, you know, Kansas or Utah or any of the other good teams in the Big 12. I simply say you rarely have this much turnover on offense. And then start a guy that is is a running quarterback first. There's no question about that and have just an unbelievable amount of success right out of the gate. It's my single biggest question. And by the way, because if K State's good and if he's good, I'm just I I think that the Big 12 is a lot better. I think Kansas is better the, than Kansas. The State. contrast between Avery Johnson and Will Howard will be massive, and I think that Will Howard was taken for granted at K State. I think that people saw the way some of those games went last season and said, "Oh, Will's done. Like he doesn't like." You know, he we we need to move him along and get someone else in there. I think that there will be some people who have heartburn over that, over the fact that you didn't prioritize keeping Will Howard and the fact that he went to Ohio State and is going to go and, you know, compete for a national championship. And you're sitting here, with all due respect to Avery Johnson, because I think dude's talented, but he is largely unproven and he's a young guy. And, he, and I think Avery Johnson runs too damn much. Which ultimately leads to the injury report. Can he be a 65% completion guy? Can he do that? To do that, you're going to have to call design dropbacks, and he's going to have to stay in the pocket. And you have the running backs now to make that happen. And I think you need to see that he, he – you need to prove he can do that. Anyway, here nor there, my point is I think the top – Three teams in this league are you. I think Utah is head and shoulders better than anybody else in the Big Twelve. I don't think it's close. Uh, and again, let's on August nineteenth, everybody's healthy. Utah, it's not close. Utah's the best team in the league, right? And I think you look at K State two, Kansas two. Oh, interchange those two. Those are your top three teams in the league. I think Oak State is fourth. And then I don't think we know who the rest of this league is. How good is West Virginia going to be? It, it, how good are they going to be? I think we're going to find out very early. And I think we're going to find out if they can, can they run the ball on the road the way they do at home? Can they clock control on the road the way they do at home? We're going to find out how good it, like you look around the rest of this league, how good are the fighting Fafitas? Man. Because there, there are some lofty expectations for Arizona. And you guys remember that preseason poll we we talked about two weeks ago? We had them what third in the conference, fourth in the conference, like wild. That's insanely high, wild. I, and I would love to understand. I would love to understand it. You again, asking for a friend. You don't have at Arizona. You don't have a two hundred forty million dollar financial. Um accident the abacus fell apart and you put some things back in the wrong spot um, you don't have that kind of financial shortfall you don't have your head coach and a lot of your talent leave now your 
quarterback and one of the best wide receivers in the country are still there. But you don't have that kind of turnover and win. Point to me. Show me where that's happened. Cashless. Because I'm telling you, it hasn't happened. It has not happened. So how good is Arizona? How many games is Kenny Dillingham at ASU going to win that he's not supposed to win? Because I think it's probably three or four. Because I think he's he's going to have them close close to, to six wins. And you look at the rest of this conference, what's Willie Fritz doing at Houston? What is... How good is Gus Malzahn going to have UCF? Because the bounce house is going to be tough this year. Yeah, I think they're going to be a lot better. I I, I think that they obviously... But Jerry suffered. Bohannon's at BYU, yeah, and he's the greatest quarterback God. anybody's ever seen. And now all of a sudden, Jake Retzloff had an amazing weekend and everything. We get it, dude. We get it. But we Jerry Bohannon Jerry with a G, Bohannon. not a J. Yeah. It's, it's Jerry with a G. Yeah, Jerry. We get it. Anyway, yeah, UCF should be good. UCF should be a team that can can beat you if you make one mistake. That's how I look at them. I, I I look at them as like, hey, you should beat like Utah should beat UCF, no doubt about it, let's say. Or or Kansas should beat UCF, no doubt about it. But if Kansas turns it over, let's say, okay, UCF's now in that game. You're a danger you're in danger of losing that game, especially if you're playing on the road. And then there's the state of Texas. I'm telling you, this league is going to be unbelievable this year. Well and and I think Texas, the the state of Texas that is Texas Tech and Baylor are that you're, you're, you're talking about two teams that need to improve big time. Baylor needs to be six, seven wins at least. And Joey needs to be at the top of the conference. I, I don't know. Like I, we can only say it so many times on the show that, that, you know, being bowl eligible it, uh, for Texas tech is it to me just isn't good enough. I, I think you need, you know, eight, nine wins. At least you need to be, in the in the conversation, maybe not winning the conference this year, but in the conversation halfway through. If we get to the midpoint and you're we're talking about, hey, is Texas Tech going to contend for this conference? Or halfway through, then you're having a good season. But we can't have, you know, one in three out the gate. We can't have you know, I a want, terrible stuff. I want Joey McGuire to be that dude. I want him to win a national championship. I want Texas Tech to be Texas Tech has always been just that close. How transformative is Texas Tech in the college football playoff for this conference? Incredibly. Incredibly. Abilene Christian at Washington State, North Texas, Arizona State, Cincinnati at Arizona, Baylor at TCU, at Iowa State, Colorado, at Oak State, West Virginia. That's a nine-win schedule. To me, that should be nine wins at least. You should be undefeated going to Tucson October 5th. So if you're, what is that, 5-0 and oh, heading to Tucson? Bro, if you're 5-0 and oh, and you still have all of your schedule left and you don't finish with nine wins, come on, dude. I, I mean, what are we you, doing? You should, if you're 5-0 and oh going to Tucson, I think you're probably going to win that game. You're going to beat Baylor, which has become kind of an interesting, mat- I mean, that's a rivalry of sorts. And then Spike Dykes' kid in Fort Worth. How good is TCU? What do you guys expect out of TCU this year? I don't know either. <laughs> I don't know. Because I think, and we we talked about it on the show last year. We all knew they were going to backslide. Right? We all knew that. Sonny Dykes is a really good football coach. He's got a good quarterback. He's got, like, he's he's got the goods. That's a team that that should contend for the conference title. Right. Will they? I don't know. Will they? I, I don't know. But you know who's not on Texas Tech's schedule? The Jitta Jits. The Utes are not on their schedule this year, and I think that's a huge miss for, for Texas Tech. They've got to take advantage of that. Because I also think we're going to get, we are going to get, an undefeated Utah heading to Stillwater. Now, let's not get carried away. It's Southern Utah and Baylor and Salt Lake City and then Utah State. You but, don't but leave the, the state of up. Utah until you go to Stillwater. So not only do you not leave the state of Utah, you're playing teams that that are essentially three weeks of warm-ups for you. You should pound those teams. Especially with where Utah State is. That's not the traditional... Because on a garden variety year, there'd be heat in that game. Mm-hmm. But there are meltdowns and yeah, 
we're going to get a real good look at where this season's going September 21st in Stillwater. Because I just... What's Oklahoma State got before that? What, what's Oklahoma... Controversy is what they've got before that. That's what they've got before that. Because, again, Mike Gundy won't talk fucking football. Will you please talk football, sir? Stay hard! Like, and... and... Over the weekend, Mike Gundy just, he just can't, he just, he just won't do it. No. He can't help himself. He, he, I understand that, that God created, you know, Oklahoma State football in his name, in image. God's and, name. I get image, it, Dabo. I get it. That's who you are in Stillwater. We built this right? program on NIL. Dabo Sweeney 2.0 is your, oh, oh, wait, you haven't won anything. Other than the fact that you, your quarterback sucks and has a normal size forehead, you're just <laughs> like Clemson at Trevor Lawrence. Well, it's probably different than what you're thinking, though. Here's Mike Gundy getting ready. Hey, coach, how you doing? How you getting ready for the season? That's what I told the players. You can just, There's no negotiating now. You can just, Portal's over. Right. All negotiations history. Now we're playing football. You can enjoy just it's coaching crazy and playing football. Conference and a 12 team playoff and yeah. everything being so different. Mm -hmm. Just the newness of it. All. Yeah, and you know, the business side of what we do now is is we have to have those conversations with them. You know, tell your agent to quit calling us and asking for more money. It's non negotiable now. Get to start again in December. So now we're able to direct ourselves just at football and that part is fun. Because there's been so much other stuff going on, it's been hard to really focus on football. Because you're a, you drive drunk, you admittedly said hundreds of thousands of times. Hello, we are not available now. Please leave your name and phone number <laughs> after the. What are you doing? What is he doing? He's gaslighting. That's what he's doing. He's being a red ass and doing what Mike Gundy does. And. And I just don't get Talk it. Talk football, sir. Talk football. But the problem is, the problem is, he can't talk football because all they're going to ask him about is Ollie Gordon. That's all they're going to ask him about. Hey, and, you guys going out drinking together yet, bud? Yes. Is Ollie a Dos Equis guy or more of a Modelo guy? Let me guy? ask you something. Like, what are Wait, we I, at? And I'm just curious, Coach Gundy. Was it out of a can or a bottle? I'm just curious. And did the truck have auto start? You know, I don't have, break the rules. Have you and Steve Keim talked? Okay, because that's, it's illegal. That's right. That is <laughs> that was, a really that was out of pocket, bro. <laughs> that is a really obscure reference well, that you guys listen, won't listen, understand. Marty, 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 Steve Keim was driving a Raptor. Ollie was just driving a beat Honda Civic, so it's different. Steve Kimes, the former general manager of the Arizona Cardinals. He's a fat fuck with a bald <laughs> head who drives drunk. Just a stalwartness. Steve Kime, the general manager of the Arizona Cardinals, was driving a Ford Raptor, allegedly under the influence. No longer that, because he's not. He has a huge neck. Yeah. Anyway, the point is. Hey, he won't talk football, bro. He won't. He refuses. And, tell her, I'll tell her to quit calling me. And, and again, we're, we'll talk about it. We're going to talk about it after they lose to Utah at home. And and Mike's gonna say, oh, well, this, you know, we're we're gonna have to review the tape, and you know, I I don't really we're we're on the next week, just the same way he did with with Oklahoma, didn't want to talk about it, and then when they won the game, nobody it was cares all about, about that. The fans. Nobody cares about that. It's all about the fans, and we don't need know, that. Everything was amazing. We don't want to play ball. Like, we, but dude, Mike, sucks. you're a two face, bro. We don't want to play. You, oh God, we won the game, and yeah, I just like, want to say. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> you guys remember that last year at media again in in four? Oh, excuse me, in Tarrant County, when Mike Gundy said, "We don't talk about Pat Badlo. We don't. Who, our fans don't want Pat. I don't want Badlo. Oh God, we won the game. That's <laughs> Well, the best way to punish them, Marnie, is by giving them 50 carries a night. That's the, that's the best way we can punish them. Why don't you fuck off? <laughs> Man, dude. I cannot wait for that Utah-Oklahoma State I'm game. serious. What is Mike Gundy going to say if they lose at home to Utah? 
Like, what do you even say? I I don't know. It it. it, it you know, I, I, he'll be ready. I mean, obvious, uh, obvi. uh, you look at Mike Gundy. Let's, let's true tell about Mike Gundy. He's a hell of a football coach, regular season game preparation, X's and Mike Gundy's a really good football coach. He it's all the little things outside of, uh, of that, that prevent them from winning at the highest level. And you look at what he has running up to that September 21st game. He ain't got nothing. South Dakota State, Arkansas at Tulsa. That's it. No excuse. Huge. So they don't leave the state of Oklahoma, and the Utes don't leave the state of Utah until they get on a plane and go to Stillwater. So don't tell me you're tired or you're injured. Don't bring me like, you're poor or you're sick. Like, don't bring me come your... On. Come on, dude. I am stoked for that game. It's one of the games of the year. And the problem is then he's got to turn around and go to Manhattan and play K-State. And this is where, this is where obviously their toughest stretch of games happen. Because again, Jerry with a G is an amazing quarterback in Provo. Y'all yes. all this cap ass shit. Yeah, you know, Jerry, the greatest quarterback ever. Uh, the stretch that Oklahoma State has is impossibly difficult. And it's why I always say when I read their schedule to you on the show, who are you? George Klyovkov in the Pac-12 and, you know, Larry Scott sending USC to the Palouse to die on a Friday night all those years ago. Bruh. Uh, at Tulsa, Utah, at K-State, West Virginia, at BYU. <laughs> like, that's a, are you kidding me? Yeah, that's a really who who wrote that schedule? Bro, you're no Florida, but that'll do. That's wild. Like that's that's insane. And and again, this is this is this is what I'm saying. Like people reacted to you saying that the Kansas schools were going to be better than Oklahoma State, and you you'd have thought that that my guy over here said like some ridiculous thing, like that you know it just was so outlandish. But you look at the schedule and it's like, dude, they they've got a difficult road. Oh, boy. Now, this isn't this isn't building up or deck on the student over the student section at Utah. Um, you're you you just put in a comment, sir, that Arizona has a chance to win the conference championship. <laughs> Get your ass Big off 12, the rollers, bro. Big 12 has look who's talking. Big 12 has Utah, KU, Kansas State, Oak State, West Virginia, <laughs> and Arizona. All of those six teams could win the conference title. Oh, shit. You think Arizona can win a conference championship? Tell me. Bring me your poor. Edge of Mikatos. Tell me exactly what am I missing about the fighting Fafitas and Tuxin? What am I missing? Because uh, I clearly am up in the night. I'm lost. I don't know what I'm talking about. Are we clear on that? You know, I mean, I think we all know how How I don't watch college football on this show. Do you even watch jazz basketball? I don't. Uh, somebody needs to educate me on what on earth we're, we're missing on Arizona. Because I've tried. And I, I have... I have I have tried to understand what people are looking at. But this team, in my opinion, the way they're built, I don't understand what it is that I'm missing. And somebody needs to help me understand it. Um, I understand that Noah Fafita is a hell of a quarterback. We have affectionately named them the Fighting Fafitas for a reason. He's a hell of a quarterback. but. It, it, Fafita and McMillan, that might be the best one-two punch in the Big 12 quarterback wide receiver. Okay, but you've got to have more than that. Well, Monty, Dino Babers, totally get it. I understand it. <laughs> well, Monty. But, but, but I, I'm, I am asking you, when I look at this roster in this step chart, I, I want to understand it. Trey Smith. Um, came with 
Brent Brennan from San Jose State. Great. Why was he at San Jose State? Okay, maybe I'm just a cock like that. All right, cool. <laughs> You're not competing at the top of this conference. It is what it is. Right? And and you look at and, and I I just want they're going to have to do it on the field. Bro, and somebody's going to have to show me that they can compete because you look at their schedule Listen to this stretch of games. Okay, New Mexico, Northern Arizona, and then the party's over. Just turn the fucking lights off because it's it's it the season ends at K State, at Utah, Texas Tech, at BYU. Like that's one of the toughest stretches of games in the enti- on the entire college football schedule. Well, I, I think it keeps going too, though, because and I know everyone says Colorado's gonna suck and they're gonna be terrible. But you just played all those really tough teams. Then you got to play Colorado. And those games, Colorado and West Virginia are in Tucson. I would expect Arizona. I think Arizona is good enough to win their home games. But when you look at the fact that it's it's at K-State, at Utah, at UCF, at TCU. Bro. I, I, you're not, you are going to, in my opinion, struggle to, to be a 6-7-8 win team. I think they they will be bull eligible. They will not be eight nine. Like I saw a preview yesterday that had them at ten wins. Find me ten wins on that Arizona schedule. Okay, so you come out and you're two and zero. Are you going to Manhattan and winning? Come on. Apparently, at Utah, not a chance. You, I don't think I don't think Utah loses at home. Just my opinion. Okay, Texas Tech at Tucson. Let's give you a win there. That's three wins. At BYU, and I think that's going to be a night game. It's October twelfth, uh, five fifty two hundred feet of elevation on a crisp October night. Yeah, if that's a night game, you're not you're not winning that game, dude. And it's Jay Hill's defense, and I know I got ripped for this in the comments section the other day. Jay Hill's defense is going to be much much better at BYU. That defense is significantly better, and. With And again, I understand Jerry Bohannon with a G, the greatest quarterback anybody's ever seen because BYU fans apparently now smoke crack, I guess, because if one more BYU fan gets in my comment section and says, Jerry Bohannon looks great. Okay, is a hell of a drug. You're going to have a tough time beating BYU. Anybody that comes to Provo should expect to be in a dogfight because that's going to be a really tough game. Colorado and West Virginia. What expect at home, Colorado. Okay, so let's give you let's give you New Mexico, Arizona, Northern Arizona, rather. Let's give you Texas Tech. I'm not giving you BYU. You'll beat Colorado. You're not beating West Virginia. You're not beating UCF. You beat you beat Houston for your fifth win. You're not going to Fort Worth and beating TCU. And I think you beat Arizona State. Six wins. Even if you gave them UCF, there's still only you're, seven but, wins. But you're not going to UCF and winning. Not you're not going to UCF on the the first week of November. Do you know how difficult it is to win at the bounce house? Again, I know I don't know anything. I'm telling you, Gus Melzon and that UCF team, especially at the bounce house. Forget it. You're not. You shouldn't go there. You shouldn't have them on the schedule and expect to win. I'm for real. I think it's one of the real danger games for Utah because not only is it is it the le- the the last game of the year, it's in Orlando uh, uh, on November 29th. What is that going to be like? Seventy percent humidity. Yeah, probably. Dude, you know how difficult that is. And then I look at Utah's schedule, and it's not like they're a walk in the park. They're I think some of their biggest games are at home. It, look at listen to the home schedule for Utah, Arizona, TCU, BYU, and Iowa State. Uh, but their road games uh, are Utah State, Oak State, Arizona State, Houston, Colorado, and UCF. I you, if you're and I think they are much better than anybody in this conference. That's a two-loss team, in my opinion. Because I think you have some real landmine games in Stillwater. That Arizona State game terrifies me. 
I'm just going to tell you now, I think, in my opinion, Arizona State is the game you don't want to go play that game in, in Tempe. You just, you don't. You go to that house built of concrete because all, all Sun Devil Stadium is, and I'm not calling it the other name. <laughs> I'm not. All Sun Devil Stadium is, is a massive slab of concrete. Slab. And if you play that game in the slab, <laughs> if you play that game in Tempe, if that's a day game, Dude, you're cooking. You're going to lose that game. You're going to lose that game. It's just, I don't know, man. I think it's really going to be, this conference may have too much parity. And I know everybody's like, oh, money over here in West Texas. We want parity. No, you don't. I want more. No, you don't. Just keep inseminating cattle and let <laughs> us worry about the schedule. Because I am telling you right now, Parity for the Big 12 is bad. If they only get one team in, this league is going to struggle. You've got to have two teams in. And I will again say, throw the tortillas because you need Texas Tech to be good. You need Mike Gundy to stop being a slapdick and actually... Because <laughs> it's illegal. Just I don't listen, break the rules. You guys, just listen to... Just listen to the uh, well. Oak State James's comment is still on the screen. <laughs> just listen to this. That's what you I told the players. That, you can just, There's no negotiating now. Just, Portal's over. Right. You can enjoy, All negotiations history. Now we're playing football. You can enjoy just coaching crazy and playing football. Conference and a 12 team playoff. Yeah. Everything being so different. Mm -hmm. Just the newness of it. All. Yeah, and you know the business side of what we do now is is we have to have those conversations with them. You know, tell your agent to quit calling us and asking for more money. It's non-negotiable now. Get them start again in December. So now we're able to direct ourselves just at football. And that part is fun because there's been so much other stuff going on. It's been hard to really focus on football. First of all, the visor and the sunglasses with the mullet. Q-tip. He's Bro. a Q-tip. Which is fine. Which is fine. But now that Oklahoma's out of league, what's your excuse going to be if you don't win games? At well, Monty, Utah was just amazing. Like, we could have never beat them. Anyway, Mr. Gundy needs a number one That's fade. what I'm saying, bro. Undo P. <laughs> Mike Smith, I'm enjoying this listen to the schedule portion of the show. Keep up the great work uh, on the Marky and Jesse show. We will. <laughs> We're working on it. We're working on Marky it. Marky and Jesse. That's a new one. <laughs> uh, midweek Coog. Tech hasn't been good since Leach was fired. Tech losing to Washington. Nah, okay, look. dude. Look, midweek coup, this is your job on the show. And you do it really well. Hate everybody. <laughs> be a victim. Be a red ass. Tech is losing to the to the Cougs. Right? Because you're not the best Coug in college football. We all know that. Mm -hmm. But you're still a Coug, bro. And, and you know, um, I I would. There's not a chance. There's not a chance. Is there a chance? <laughs> if, what if, what if, <laughs> what if you turn, I don't even want to say it. What if you just take Tech's trip to Laramie last year and drop that on Washington State in the Palouse? This is a code 10 abort. And well, Monty, we're going to zero blitz on the goal line to lose the game, and it's going to be pretty incredible. And Joey allows them to zero blitz in a game losing situation. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine the absolute riot that would happen in Lubbock if he does that? If you go to, if you go to Washington, Washington State. <laughs> and you lose September. Oh my God. I that would be that would be the single greatest day of midweek Coog's life. 